Fox 45 News is following the latest executive vacancy in City Hall. Shante Jackson, the director of the mayor's office of neighborhood safety and engagement, is resigning. And the news comes just one day after Jackson faced questions from city council members during a public safety hearing. The story developing very quickly today. Fox 45 News got word Jackson is leaving just before 1130 this morning. At that time, we reached out to the mayor's office for confirmation. We were told the office would not comment on personnel matters. Three hours later, though, at around 2.30, the mayor put out a lengthy statement confirming Jackson's last day will be June 30th. Some say that indicates the resignation could have come as a surprise. Jackson herself then tweeting she was not asked or told to resign. Fox 45's Jeff Abel will join us with a live look at what this means for a cornerstone of the mayor's crime-fighting plan coming up. Our team coverage begins with Mackenzie Frost in the office Shante Jackson leaves behind. We've tried to get Shante Jackson to agree to do an interview with us for almost two years without success, all in our effort for more transparency and accountability within the mayor's office. Director Shante Jackson, a woman in the spotlight, as we investigate the agency and gun violence prevention programs trying to untangle the layers of concern. Safe streets, central to the questions surrounding transparency and accountability for the millions of dollars given to the program. With a checkered pass, the location scattered around the city. In April of last year, an internal review of Monzi and Safe Streets confirming previous reporting and analysis from Fox 45 News. The data is inconclusive surrounding the effectiveness of the Safe Streets locations. Last fall, Mayor Brandon Scott announcing a major shift in management for the program. The change coming after a year of questions from Fox 45 News about the program's effectiveness. Does that signal that the previous CBOs that were operating these locations were mismanaging the locations? No. It's about evolving. And we've struggled to get information about how this program is run, the training, the staff. Will this change bring more transparency to this for the public? We're very transparent about the program. But that has not been reality. Fox 45 News threatening to sue the city of Baltimore to get leaders to hand over the contracts with the nonprofits running each Safe Streets location. We've gone searching for workers at all the locations, trying to get a better idea of how they do their work. Few people were found and even fewer details provided. Jackson refusing to provide Safe Streets workers for an actual interview or showing Fox 45 News the inner workings of the interrupters' responsibilities. Former Mayor Sheila Dixon launching Safe Streets during her administration, now reacting to Jackson's departure. I feel that I don't know if she necessarily had the best expertise and background um, to really handle that um, agency. Mm -hmm. um, it's a big agency. Yeah, it is a big agency. And unfortunately, you know, I don't know what has happened at City Hall, you know, with the um, change of leadership, but um, whatever decisions are going to be made in the future um, with that agency, because it's important, it's part of the, you know, crime fighting effort um, that the mayor can identify and find the right person. Before being tapped as Monzi's director, Jackson was the acting leader of the Baltimore Community Mediation Center in 2019. That's the nonprofit running the Woodbourne McCabe Safe Streets location at the time. The same spot where these court records from a murder case show an employee describing how she was taught to clock in on her phone without ever having to go into work and outlining how Safe Streets workers would not hold meetings at their location, rather meet at places like McDonald's and Applebee's. Jackson exiting City Hall leaves the mayor's office of neighborhood safety and engagement without a leader at a critical time for Baltimore as the summer and crime concerns are starting to heat up. According to city records, Jackson got a promotion in November of last year, bringing her total annual salary to more than $223,000. It's still unclear who the mayor will name as Jackson's replacement. In Baltimore, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. Jackson has faced several questions about her involvement with a Monzi employee who was arrested and charged with vehicular manslaughter. Fox 45 News found an email she sent to senior staffers and community-based organizations about the employee, Gardnell Carter, saying, quote, following the support and assistance of Mayor Scott and Monzi, Carter will be released. Jackson eventually told Fox 45 News she meant emotional support. Carter is no longer working with Monzi. He pled guilty to the charges yesterday. 
Then there's questions about Jackson's ex-boyfriend who runs the nonprofit Project NUMA. That group got a federal grant through Monzi. Fox 45 News interviewed internal communications among Monzi staffers, including Jackson, praising employees for completing the grant application process. The mayor's office says Jackson later refused or recused herself from that grant process. Well, Fox 45 News has tried to question Jackson on those issues a number of times, and we've also requested a one-on-one -on -one interview. She has refused to st sit down with us and many times walks away from our questions. We're not talking about cherry-picking numbers. Let's make sure we don't report that, okay? Okay. Director Jackson, can I ask you a couple of questions? Are you going to the next yes. event? Yes. Okay. Okay. Director Jackson, can no, you, ex thank you explain a little bit more no, about thank Roca? You. When can we learn more about safe streets? City State's Attorney Ivan Bates commented on Jackson's departure. He said in part he commends Executive Director Jackson for the groundwork she laid for the group violence reduction strategy work, the progress she made in the historically volatile Western District, and the expansion of the strategy into new sectors of our city. Well, Monzi isn't just in charge of safe streets. The department oversees several of the mayor's key public safety efforts, including domestic violence and sexual assault response, safety policy research, and the city's group violence reduction strategy plans. GVRS has come under scrutiny. Some see Jackson's leaving as just another problem for an already troubled program. Fox 45's Jeff Abel joins us live with what this means for the city's crime fight. Jeff? Well, you know, city leaders had credited the strategy for making widespread progress, but just how much progress is in dispute tonight? And so is the fate of the strategy. In the city's western district, I got two more number one males that have been shot. Violence has hardly taken a break. Nothing in this city is being a cop. It's falling apart. This district is where the city's group violence reduction strategy was first launched, a strategy which offers help to those identified as being the most vulnerable toward committing crime. Whatever it is that you need, we're going to provide. Two years ago, Monzi director Shante Jackson met with Baltimore residents to explain the program's purpose. The city had attempted to launch the program twice before, but failed both times. We did try to do this twice before under two different mayors. Mm -hmm. The first reason why it didn't work is because there wasn't the adequate political will. BPP wasn't appropriately staffed or trained. Just months after the program launched in the Western District, city leaders touted progress. We are talking about a significant step in the right direction of seeing violence be reduced. They're not cherry picking numbers, that we are actually making a significant impact in what the fatal and non fatal numbers look like in the Western District. While some city council members seem skeptical, Jackson stayed firm. This is an academically proven strategy. But a year and a half later, the homicide statistics tell a different story. So far this year, 14 people have lost their lives here, making the Western District the second deadliest district in the city. She came up with a lot of catchy phrases, but she was not able to show any successes or any benchmarks to go along with those catchy phrases. Community activist Kenji Scott has long questioned the progress of the city strategy. Now, as Jackson prepares to leave, there are questions whether a part of her strategy will be leaving too. Now that the tip of the spear is broken, you have to wonder whether the overall program is in doubt. Now that she's gone, now maybe we can get somebody in there and do something significant. Well, last year, some city council members questioned why the results of the program were not coming fast enough. We're live tonight. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Jeff, thank you. This is the latest resignation to hit the mayor's leadership team, meaning agencies responsible for almost $1.3 billion in taxpayer funds are without permanent leadership. Recently, the mayor's chief of staff and director of communications abruptly resigned. The communications director was appointed just this past February. The director of the city's troubled Department of Public Works is also resigning. Jason Mitchell will be leaving next month. And the city is also without a fire chief. Chief Niles Ford stepped down late last year after a scathing report about failures inside the department. Well, on Fox 45 News at 5, we spoke with political analyst John Deedy, who says this could indicate a problem within the Scott administration. 
A lot of people have come and gone recently from the mayor's staff, et cetera. And, you know, you're facing a re-election situation. You need to have people feel that there's good people aboard. Because I always have a theory when people leave. When someone leaves the first time that they're gone out of, let's say, chief of staff, people say it's generally that person's fault who left. The second time, it's kind of like maybe each person's fault individually. By the time you're on the, your third person mm -hmm. in the same job title, it's not the person who just left. It's the person who made the hire. Well, we want you to join the conversation. Do you have confidence in the Scott administration to run the city of Baltimore? 96% of voters say no. Head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in. Scan the QR code on your screen. That will take you to all of our coverage on Monzi and Director Shante Jackson and the Safe Streets program. You can also go to our website, foxbaltimore.com. I'm Mary Bubala. Thank you for watching. Here's another video for you to watch. Also take some time to subscribe to our YouTube channel.